Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, peace and joy be with you. In a short while, we will be listening to the reflection from Father David Lemebo of the Missionaries of God's Love. Let's be open to the Holy Spirit and prepare our hearts so the Word of God will dwell richly in our lives today. My word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path and a light unto my path Or what king marching into battle would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king advancing upon him with 20,000 troops? But if not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, every one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. Saint Ignatius Loyola was the founder of an order in the 16th century when European countries were vigorously navigating the mainland of Latin America and Asia. The Society of Jesus became the largest order in the Catholic Church to date. Even the leaders of this order were once called the Black Pope. This is because the, this order was very influential. Although now one of its members has become the official Pope of the Catholic Church, which we know as Pope Francis. I myself attended Canisius College in Jakarta for my entire high school, managed by the Jesuit priests. They have an extraordinary spiritual tradition. St. Ignatius' life was not a straight line. He was the youngest of 13 children. At the age of 16, he was sent to be the servant of Juan Velasquez, treasurer of the kingdom of Castile. Considered as a member of the Velasquez family, he was often present at the palace and increasingly uh, developed a taste for the worldly things especially the woman. He was very addicted to gambling, liked to debate, and was often involved in swordsplay. One day at the age of 30, Ignatius joined the war against the French army. During the battle, a cannonball hit him, injuring one leg and breaking the other. His leg was repaired but not healed so needed to be broken again and rearranged all without anesthesia oh, saint ignatius even had to cut the bone in his protruding knee even though he was told to die ignatius recovered but with one leg shorter than the other for the rest of his life he walked with a limp when he was sick St. Ignatius was very bored and asked for a romantic novel. Mm. Fortunately, nothing was available at Loyola Castle other than a copy of the book of the life of Christ and a book on the saints. Desperate, Ignatius began to read it. The more he read, the more he admired the lives of saints worthy of emulation. However, at the same time, he continued his dream of fame and glory, along with fantasies of winning the love of a noble woman. However, he noticed that after thinking about the saints and Christ, he felt peaceful and content. But when he daydreamed about his noble woman, he felt restless and dissatisfied. This experience was not only the beginning of his conversion, but also the beginning of the spiritual discernment or the discernment of spirit which St. Ignatius composed and called the spiritual exercises. These are still popular and useful today. One of the greatest prayers 
is St. Ignatius' prayer, which I personally prayed as I faced my life choices. This prayer is entitled Suspice, Latin word that means receive. Do you want your life to be changed like St. Ignatius? For me, the answer is yes. Let's pray for the St. Ignatius Loyola Suspice together. This is a prayer of surrender. Take, Lord, receive. Take, Lord, receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, my whole will, all that I have and all that I possess. You gave it all to me, Lord. I give it all back to you. Do with it as you will, according to your good pleasure. Give me your love and your grace, for with this I have all that I need. Amen.